Greeting psychology students. Today we're going to explore the three brain regions that are involved in explicit memory that feature in the psych course. So before we go there, let's just quickly recap what we mean by explicit memory. So an explicit memory requires conscious and intentional recall to bring that back into our present experience. It is made up of semantic memories, which are facts, shared knowledge, and episodic memories, which are autobiographical experiences. So before we get into some of the specific semantics of the three structures, I just want to bring it all together um, for a quick overview. And let's relate this to the example of your memory of a school formal. And I want to do this in four stages. So first of all, we go to the formal and we form an, an initial impression of the event. And those initial impressions are stored in the neocortex in a variety of locations because there's a visual aspect um, of the formal in terms of viewing everyone, the fashion, uh, the layout of the room, there's some auditory memories being formed in terms of the music, the conversations, etc. And of course, your prefrontal cortex is going to be very active in terms of guiding your conscious experience. All right, then we move on to phase two, and this is where the hippocampus and the amygdala come into play. Because now these two structures are going to be involved in the consolidation process. So the hippocampus is going to deal with contextual aspects of the formal, the where and when, and the amygdala is going to be involved in the emotionality of the night. Now, hopefully it's um, all positive and the more intense the emotion, the more active the amygdala is going to be and the more vivid the recall will be when we retrieve it later on. Then we move into phase three. So then we have the, cons the consolidation of the memory in long term. And so now we're storing that memory um, through the LTP mechanism back in the neocortex. Now, this is a complex process. There's a lot of variables that are going, that are going to impact, impact how long this takes, such as how regularly we recall it, uh, the complexity of the memories, etc. Then later on, when we want to retrieve or recall aspects of the formal, we go through the fourth stage and in terms of retrieval. And that's when all three are going to be involved in the actual retrieval process because the neocortex is going to help you basically bring all those integrated aspects of the memories together, the visual, the auditory, et cetera. The hippocampus um, is involved in, in helping to give that a contextual aspect. And the amygdala helps um, retrieve the emotionality of the formal. So now I want to itemize those three structures and just focus on their role in explicit memory. So again, first thing is, there's uh, your neocortex is responsible for the temporary storage of the initial impression of the memory, particularly in the sensory areas, the visual areas, the auditory areas, etc. Then when we have the transfer phase from short term to long term, there's some integration between the hippocampus and the amygdala and those some neural networks are being formed in your neocortex for the long-term and permanent storage of the explicit details of the formal, let's say. Then when during the retrieval phase, there's uh, it's the neocortex that enables you to basically integrate all the facets of the memory, the visual, the emotionality, the auditory. So we can basically um, create this meaningful whole of an episodic event in the, in the um, face of the formal. Now let's move to the hippocampus. So its job, as I talked about before, is it's involved in the consolidation, the encoding of the explicit memory. 
when we transfer it from short term to long term. And how it does this is it integrates that memory with existing neural networks of similar memories so that we can basically store this in a meaningful way that will help in terms of our storage and then the consequential retrieval. Second function is, again, if there's an emotionality aspect um, to the episodic memory, then your hippocampus interacts with the amygdala to encode and mediate the emotionality of the actual event. And then when we're trying to retrieve the memory from the neocortex via some cues, the hippocampus is involved in, the, in contextualizing the memory so that we can basically put a where, where it happened, all right, and when it happened on that actual event. Now, the amygdala in terms of explicit memory is probably the most simplistic of the three to explain because it simply mediates, processes, consolidates, and is involved in retrieving the emotionality of the event. But unlike the hippocampus, it also plays a role in implicit memory, um, fear conditioning, not the actual movements of a classically conditioned response, that would be a cerebellum, um, but the actual association. This will come into play more for unit four when we look at the phobia unit.